In this tutorial, I'm going to give you some explanations about the milis and the micros overflow and then to show you how to solve that overflow issue. Okay, so first of all, whenever you try to get milis or micros, so to get the time, you are going to store that in an unsigned long, so let's say time now is equal to milis, or you can use micros, okay? Milis, you get the time in milliseconds and micros in microseconds, okay? And both are stored inside an unsigned long variable. So unsigned long, basically, it's going to go from zero, so that's the minimum value, to about four billions something, okay? So you have four billions value between zero and four billions. Now, the thing is that in programming, when you have a data type and when you go beyond the limit of that data type, it's going to go back to the beginning, okay? So if you try to go at the max value plus one, you're not going to get the max value plus one, you're going to get zero. The same thing happens if you try to go in the negative numbers, okay? If you try to go at minus one, you're simply going to go back to the maximum value, okay? That is kind of, a, you can see that not as a line like this, but as a circular okay, set of variables. Okay, whenever you go after this, you come back here. Whenever you go after this, you come back here. And now, so what does it mean? It means that the micros and the millis are going to start from uh, zero when the program starts and then increment, increment, increment. And then when they are going to reach four billions, after that, the value is going to go back to zero, okay? And for, so for millis, I'm going to write here millis, this is going to be about 49 days, okay? Because if you take 4 billion uh, milliseconds, this is about 49 days. And for micros, this is much shorter. This is 71 minutes, so just a bit more than one hour, okay? So 4 billion microseconds is about 71 minutes. So after 71 minutes, if you try to read the time at the minute, let's say 72, then you're not going to get 72, you're going to get something close from zero. And so this can lead to some problems, okay? If your program runs for a long time, you can't really tell what is the time since the start, since it might have uh, reset to zero a few times. But now I'm going to show you basically the way to use micros and millis. And this way is actually to compute a duration to enable an action. And just let me show you that with some other code. So here is a code that is going to simply execute an action every uh, 5,000 milliseconds in that case. So I have a previous time here a variable, which keeps the time with millis. You can also use micros, okay, if you want. Then a time interval of 5,000 milliseconds here and then what I do in the loop is well I compute the current time okay with millis also if you use millis here you use millis here if you use micros here you use micros here okay very important and then what I do is I check the difference between the current time which I just measured and the previous time we have done an action if you just subtract two times you get a duration and then you compare this duration with the time interval here. And if this is greater than 5,000 in this case, you enter this uh, block of code, you execute the action, and you set the previous time to the current time. So the next time you enter this loop, you're gonna need to wait at least 5,000 milliseconds to enter the if again. This is the way to use millis and micros in your program, okay? To compute a duration, and to enable an action whenever the duration uh, passes a certain threshold. Now, let me explain a bit how this works and how here you don't even need to care about the overflow problem. So at the beginning of the program, millis will be zero or close to zero, okay? So previous time will be zero and then when you measure the current time, it's gonna be a very small value, okay? So when you do current time minus previous time, well, this and this are actually, well, correct. Now the thing is that it's going to increase, 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 increase. And then the current time, so the millis, when you read current time, at one point, this value is gonna overflow. So let's say this is four billion something at uh, 
uh, one point and then the next time you enter the loop this value comes back to something close to zero. And now let's see what will happen in that case in the if here. So the current time will be close to zero. The previous time will be still on the other side, so close to 4 billion. So you have a very small number close to zero and a very big number close to 4 billion from the last time. If you do this minus this, that's going to give you a very large negative number, which is going to be close to a minus 4 billion, okay? But the thing is that if you remember what I just told before, the variable can overflow after it reaches the maximum or also when it reaches the minimum, okay? And here, minus 4 billion, you are going to be outside of the range of the data type. So minus 4 billion will actually overflow and go back to the end of the range, which will be a positive number. And so this basically, when it gives you a very large negative number, well, at the end, that's going to give you a positive number. And then you can just compare with this and you're going to be able to enter this if. And after you enter this if, you just set the previous time to the current time, which is now close to zero. And that's just like you are starting the program again. So no problem until you reach the overflow again. And now you can understand what's happening here and why basically you don't have any problem with that. So if you use micros and millis to compute durations to enable some actions, the problem doesn't even exist. Okay. And now, uh, however, if you want to keep the time since the program started, what you can do is you can initialize a counter here at zero when you start the program, and then you can monitor the time, continue to monitor the time, and check when the value overflows, okay? You can easily see when the values is uh, below 4 billion and then go back to close to zero. And at this point, you're going to add one to the counter, okay? And so at any time, you have the value from the counter and the value from millis or from micros, which can give you the exact time since the start of the program. If you liked this video, subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future. Also, check out my online courses so you can learn Arduino step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point. Links in the description. Alright, thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses.